Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Hello and welcome to another podcast. This is the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, I'm Steve Lacey. And my name is Phil Thompson and we are with JSL Solutions and we do this podcast usually every week, although we didn't do one last week because I was on vacation. Yeah, and I had a wedding. You had a wedding. Your son got married. Yes. That was fun. Last weekend, yes. Lots of rain. It was an outdoor wedding with very threatening rain, yes, and some rain. But it was fun. It was. It was even though we you know, in Arizona here we don't get a lot of rain. It's monsoon season, but uh, the rain we had wasn't terrible. It was nice. Yeah, it was just added to the stress level. <laughs> That's right. Well, congratulations to Ryan, who also has worked here at JSL Solutions. And uh, so, Steve, uh, what are we going to talk about today? So today we're going to get back to tech a little bit and introduce some solutions to busting the summer slump. Yes, we. Uh, if you've been listening to this podcast, and by the way, we'd encourage you to uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and, and give us a rating. But uh, we are obviously a tech company that does streaming video. We do mobile apps. We do websites. We do church management tools. And uh, But because of our background, uh, Steve and I both have a background that is very rich when it comes to ministry and church work. Uh, we also talk about other issues, other things, not just tech related, but leadership stuff, volunteer stuff. And it's kind of a combination of all that today. Uh, so we're going to talk about some some tech gadgets, some tech software, some things that you can use as as we begin, as we begin to get out of summer here in Arizona. We're kind of out of summer, so to speak, as school has started for a lot of schools over here. But we know people in different parts of the country they st- they're still in summer. And school doesn't start till September. All right. But anyhow, so uh, you know you go through the summer and it's. A lot of churches don't shut down, but they kind of go on cruise control, although I'm a big proponent. I think you can grow in the summer, but that's a whole other issue. We'll do that next year. But uh, you know, what can you do to stir up some excitement with your volunteers to kind of reconnect with people, uh, your volunteers especially, but also your whole church? So we've got some ideas here. So shall we? Shall we take off? Let's, let's sure. Ahead, let's Steve. jump into this. Give us the first one. That, that's so we're, this is all about online communication with your volunteers. This, right. this first little section. So the first thing we talked about was uh, Facebook group. You know, Facebook uh, is is a fairly popular social media deal out there. They only have about a billion people, uh, but you know they're getting there. They're mm-hmm. moving along. And uh, but I'm being sarcastic. But Facebook does offer you can have some groups. A Facebook group uh you know most people are familiar with their own facebook profile their own facebook what is it page uh, companies can have their own pages but you can also have your own facebook groups and you can make them private or you can make them public and um, i would encourage you that that's an option you could have to connect with your volunteers to set up a facebook group for your whatever that ministry might be within your church uh, maybe it's a certain department in your church. Maybe it's the audio video department. Maybe it's the greeters. Maybe it's, you know, just whatever ministry you've got, you can set up all sorts of different Facebook groups and you right. can use that to communicate with. Right. I know my wife, who's a big Facebook participant, much bigger than me, um, we get together for a family reunion every summer. And so she set up a family reunion group that includes our family and close friends of the family. Okay. Now, so I've, they, I've never been included in no, that. No, you've so. not, because you've not been a part of the family no, reunion. Sorry about that. So, so it's only for people that typically come to the family mm-hmm. reunion, which is usually girlfriends of the kids okay. and that sort of thing. But they've got a, a Facebook group where they invite, uh, she invites different people to the group and only yeah. those participants can get involved and see what's going on and within you know that particular topic. And she uses that to communicate things, so it can you know, bring certain things. Here's when we're going. Right. And it's pictures, probably, too. You probably put pictures up. Yeah, she'll put pictures, yeah, pictures up. And a, a lot of it is we got a lot of people. We'll have like almost 20 people conversing on this little town in Texas. Right. And so who's going to rent cars and who can pick up who from the airport when and how sure. many people do you have in your car and, you know, just 
you know, who's coming, who's not coming, that right. sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a great little tool. So a Facebook group for that would be good. And, you know, like my church has a youth group and they have their own Facebook youth group page where they communicate among themselves and it's private and all that. And so it's a good little tool to use. Again, you can communicate things that you can post pictures. You can post anything you that you could do on Facebook on your regular thing. You can do the group page. Right. So a good tool to use. Yeah. So the idea here behind this, I mean, it's, we're coming out of a slump, so this, a lot of the things we're going to talk about are just introducing some kind of new and novel things. Right. So if you've got a Facebook group for your tech volunteer or your volunteers and keep it going, but this is just a way to, hey, we got a new Facebook uh, group for all the volunteers, and it's just something new mm -hmm. to uh, you know kind of get the energy going again. Right. Yeah. And people can communicate things and ask specific questions and. And other people can see that too if they're you know if they're a part of that group. So right. you can kind of do that. Okay, so face so so consider that uh, as you head into this fall season, maybe doing this to kind of jumpstart uh, your ministry, your volunteers. So moving on here, we have the next one, which is Asana. Asana, yes. I can never pronounce it right, but we use it here at JSL Solutions. It's A S A N A. Yes. That's how you spell it, Asana. And that is really, uh, describe what that is, Steve. So Asana is, I mean, it's geared for uh, groups that want to get some stuff done. So it's, uh, you can call it a little bit of a project management, a to-do um, management kind of tool that's kind of rolled together. So it's just a really useful tool for, for managing work and assigning tasks and that right. sort of thing and following up and collaborating. And, and again, people, it's, it's, it's the people that are in these, in the Asana group here, they can see what everybody's doing. If, if that's, if you set it up that way. Yeah, you can follow. So right. I mean, typically you would set up a project or a set of projects within Asana and then add your people kind of like you would add them to the Facebook group. They would get an invite and they would accept and they, everybody would get um, ass assigned to Asana. Okay. And you basically just whatever needs to be done. It's just a really good tool for identifying what needs to be a ton, assign people, put some due dates on them, associate right. them with the project. You can have other people following the task so they can see what's being accomplished. And, you know, so it's, right. so it's not really much of a, you know, the Facebook thing, you could do that on Facebook to some degree, but, but Facebook's more social. This is more of a task oriented you know, here's the, here's what our ministry wants to accomplish. You know, maybe you're building something out for your audio video team. Different people are assigned different tasks, uh, those kind of things. And you can you can you can upload files to it, right. uh, links. Just, yeah, and associate files with tasks and right. Uh, yeah, so we started I, we started using it here at JSL. Actually, you discovered yeah. the, <laughs> it's a nice little tool. The tool, and uh, we we're using it at our church with our board just. You Good. typically you just you sit in a meeting and you're you know, you're coordinating what's going on and they go oh well Joe needs to follow up with this and you go oh, we'll pop that into Asana, so Joe now has a reminder oh I need to follow up with that and right. get it done by you know Thursday or whatever and it will uh, it will it will send you emails to remind each person you'll send emails out and those kind of things and so it's a nice little deal and and uh, what does it cost to use this and that is absolutely free wow it's free and is is there is there a limit though? You probably can only have so many people on it for the free version. Um, is that for true? the free version, yeah. There's, uh, you can have. It's actually very generous though. I think up to thirty people. Wow. So you can have thirty people that for yeah. the free version, and if you've got you know larger group than that, yeah. then they have a paid version. And, and they have their own app too. There's an app for the iPhone as well as Android. Right. Uh, so it's Asana, or at least that's how we pronounce it. A S A N A. Asana, Asana, whatever. It's a good tool to use. So again, this is more task oriented, but this would be a nice little thing for your ministry, your church, and and it, you know, introducing this now or within the next few days would be good. Maybe as you get out of the summer thing and start fresh. Right. All right. So the, the next one is worship planner. Or worship planning is a worship worship planning .com, I, think, I think is what yeah, it's called. Yeah, the, the one we recommend is yeah, worship planning .com. I think there's a couple of competitors in there in the right. space. Yeah, and, and I don't know much about those. I know a little bit about worshipplanning.com because my church uses it. And again, it's something you can, it's really good to schedule. Uh, scheduling volunteers, ushers, greeters, music team people, you know, audio, video. I mean, anything you've got in your church that you need to schedule, any department, any ministry, you can use worshipplanning.com. Uh, it is not free. You do have to pay. 
And uh, there are, I think, different levels to it, depending on how large your church is and, and what you want to accomplish. But it is really good to, again, helps everybody stay on the same page. Uh, and again, your people have to use this. It will send emails out. It will send announcements yeah. out. It will send reminders out. And uh, again, you can find out, like, for instance, uh, my music director, you know, she sets up services and the song she's going to use. She can put in the chord charts for her members. She can actually even upload MP3 files. Maybe, maybe even video. If I, I can't remember if you can upload video to uh, worship plan. You can do video or not. But, but it, can, it's, yeah, it's, it's geared, you know, the traditional way was we we're going to have this service. Here's the songs. You know, here's the guys that are going to play different instruments in the band. Here's the guys that are going to be ushering. Here's the guy driving the tech thing. Right. And you just kind of coordinated all that by phone calls and emails and right. maybe a list or whatever. Worship planning kind of steps in and automates that whole process for you. Yeah, it's really a nice tool. It really is a good tool, and you can do a lot with it. So, again, consider doing that, especially if you're you know, kind of getting out of the summer here and you want to get a fresh start and you want to head off here with some momentum. These things can help build momentum. And as we all know, when it comes to ministry work, church work, whatever you're doing, momentum is a good thing to have on your side yes. when it's going the right direction. All right, so we've covered uh, Facebook group, Asana, worship planning, worshipplanner.com. And then as we kind of move into something maybe a little more of a different vein, but again, still trying to connect with your volunteers, uh, there is a tool that Google has continues to work on and perfect. It's called the Google Hangout or Google Hangouts. And I haven't used one lately. I haven't been on it for a few months, I don't think. But I used to use it for our online small groups. And uh, they can, they're always can improving it, and, and they've made some improvements with it already, I believe. But Google Hangouts is a video-driven, although you don't have to do video, but it's video-driven. So uh, you might consider using Google Hangout to maybe have your meetings with your, your certain people on your team, your different departments. Uh, again, a nice little tool. It will just work off your computer, and you can have, gosh, how many people can you have on at one time? I, can't uh, I it's think just, it's limited to 10. Might be 10 now, huh? Is yeah. that what it is? So, yeah, it's been probably been a couple months since we've been on as well. We were actually doing a, a weekly That's thing right. for we a long to, time. That's right, yeah. Well, we were, you know, inviting people to participate. Yeah. And so it's um, it's a very personal way to get together online. It, you know, you can equate it to the video conferencing tools from days right. gone by here where you're going to have a video camera on each person participating. Right. So if you're going to jump into this, we highly recommend you have a headset or each person yes. participate with a headset. Yeah. Otherwise, you get into some really interesting deals where there's a feedback loop going <laughs> and uh, where their audio and their microphone are together of somebody that doesn't have a headset. And it, Yeah, you know, we've done it, uh, as you were saying, Steve, with JSL Solutions, we were doing it uh, for a little while. And then, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we were doing our small groups, you know. Which was kind of nice, but but we were very limited because there's cer certain people just don't want to be on video. Although you don't have to be on video to participate, you can still be there and not have a camera, and you can watch right. everybody else and hear the audio, and you can participate as well. So there are some things you don't have to have an audio or video camera on you. But as you said, that the headsets are a very good recommendation because dark barking dogs, uh, somebody. In the, somebody's doing something and they're in the kitchen and they drop plates or silverware. Mm -hmm. every, every kind of distraction you can think of. It gets broadcast to all 10 people. So, right. Yeah. If, if you, so if you don't have a headset on, even if you do, it can be a problem. But especially if you don't have a headset on, if you just have an open microphone, uh, gosh, it will just pick up everything. And then you'll have everybody, I can't hear you. Or, yeah. but, you know. And so this too is a free tool. Mm -hmm. And yes. you pretty much go to go to any Google website and then yeah. you'll be able to find the, the Hangout tool and right. you can start a, a Hangout. Yeah, you do have to have a Google account. Yes. Uh, a Gmail account, I guess. Um, but again, you know, Google's got some great tools out there. And if you're not using Gmail, you're missing it. <laughs> you know, you told me that like, what was it, like 10 years ago or something. <laughs> Uh, and you were right. So Google Hangout is, is a good video tool, again, to work with your volunteers, to connect with people. Here's another one, Skype. Yes. Which we use quite a bit. Yes, we use Skype a lot of times for, for audio and video. I mean, it, yeah. it's uh, it's going to be, I mean, typically if you're doing the, the video thing, it's going to be somewhat limited unless you have a paid account for doing multiple people right. in the uh, video account. Yeah. 
The, the nice thing about Skype is is it's it's very international friendly. Um, I, I do like Skype. Some people don't like Skype. I actually like it. I I, I, I think it, there's a lot of things you can do with it from a customer service oriented thing. But it's also good, again, to connect, as we're talking about connecting with volunteers, you can use Skype, uh, you can use the free version. And if you want to do multiple stuff, I guess you do have to pay. Well, somebody has to pay. One person, whoever that person would be that's doing the group calling would have to have a, a paid account, if I remember right. And so, but yeah, Skype, again, it, and it's the same rules apply. You really should have a headset. Right. You know, you should yeah. really. And I found, I mean, I, I prefer Skype over my cell phone. Actually, my uh, Skype yeah. connection is a yeah. lot better quality than the cell phone. I know that. Yeah, that's so, true. Um, and by the way, Skype has an app. And so you could use Skype from your phone. You could actually do a Skype session from your mobile device, from your phone. Uh, and the same with Google. You could actually do Google Hangouts from your phone. I, I remember one time a while back, you and I, we were doing Google Hangouts for everybody. And I did one from the car. Uh, I had That's to take, right. I think I had to take Greg into a dentist appointment or something, and uh, we were done. We weren't ready for the Google Hangout to get home, but I, again, we just used an app, and I did it from my phone, and I, I think I stole the, what's the bagel company? Brewers. Brewers yeah, I used their Wi-Fi. Yeah. And uh, it worked great. It worked really well. So so a lot of these devices you can use, you know, on, on they have apps for them. Worshipplanning.com has an app. Uh, uh, Asana has an app. Uh, you can obviously use Facebook. So, again, more video-driven stuff, but uh, keep in mind you're wanting to connect with people. During the summer and then as in the fall, uh, you can connect with people. And I do like Skype and these kind of things because uh, I've got meetings. We live in Tucson, which is very spread out. Uh, and so if I want to meet with somebody that wants to talk about streaming video or mobile apps, uh, a lot of times we're, it's just as easy to do Skype. And it's time, you know, saves a lot of time, saves money, and, and you get that done. Of course, obviously, we, we work with people all over the world, and so that works for us, but you can use it locally. So, okay. So while we're on the subject of video, what's next? So video devotions. So these, these first ones were geared towards you know, getting your volunteers energized. If you get your volunteers energized, that's going to energize the rest of the church as well. Yes. Because it'll be, you know, it'll transfer through your volunteers. So this one's a little is broader. That will be you can apply it to just your volunteers. You can go church wide, right? So. Right. Video devotions or messages. So what we mean by that is, again, it's so easy today to just open up your laptop. I'm, I'm sitting here recording this podcast on my laptop with you, and there's a camera on my laptop if I wanted to use it. And you can just open up your laptop, and you could actually record. A video if you wanted to make it very simple i was watching some pastor some mega church pastor the other day i was uh, watching him and i think that's pretty much all he did was he just had the lighting was good he had good audio and he just literally had a camera where he just talked to people for about 30 minutes huh. and i guess they do that on a regular basis for their whole congregation and they put it on their website and okay. he does a and it's just more a, of a personal an informal personal yeah, kind of thing informal Kind of personal, lets people know what's going on with the church, what's happening. Uh, you know, here's some things coming up. And he just, and, and again, this is the senior pastor who's just speaking from his heart. And uh, it's, it's his style is more laid back for this than I'm sure it is, you know, than it is Sunday yeah. morning. There's a, an element of authenticity that's right. communicated when you're, when you're just sitting in front of your laptop and you don't have this big production going right. on and have right. your script read and rehearsed and all that stuff. But it's right. just more of a, uh, an informal talk yeah. or communication. Right? I was very surprised. And this guy is a mega church guy and uh, he literally had his notes and he goes, oh, let me check here. I just want to check my notes, make sure I've got this covered. And he's just doing it right in front of the camera, you know, yeah. nothing rehearsed, nothing. And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways I thought it was good. So you could do that as well as a pastor, as an associate pastor, or even just as a leader, uh, a volunteer leader for your team, uh, you know, you could set together, maybe you've got some goals for your ministry, for your church, that area of your department, uh, do a little video message. And you can always upload it to YouTube or Vimeo, and you can do a private setting on YouTube too. So, you know, when you think of YouTube, you're thinking, oh, we're going to put this on and everybody in the world's going to see it. Well, yes, or you could change that setting on YouTube and you could set it up and just upload it and uh, make it so that, you know, only people that have the link or whatever have access to it. 
I'm going to sneeze here, oh, yeah. so, but uh, it's allergy season. So again, consider video devotions or messages. And, 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 you know, this is a little more work, especially if you're going to do a devotional. But if you just want to do a, an informal message once a week uh, to your people, again, either your volunteers or church-wide, it's a nice little tool. And all you have to do is just kind of make sure that you've got your camera, you know, the camera looks is set up right. If it's on your laptop, just kind of, you know, prop your laptop up or something so the camera shot looks fairly decent. And, you know, make sure your lighting's okay and your audio's okay. And you're good to go. Mm -hmm. not, not really hard to do. So uh, we're moving along here with this podcast talking about tools you can use, tech-related tools to connect with people. But we do have our own deal that we, we don't plug this a lot, but let's plug it now. We have an app <laughs> called churchapplive.com that, that you've, uh, you and the team have put a lot of work in. And this, this Church App Live mobile app actually has a lot of interactive tools that you can use to connect with people. Tell us a little bit about it. So, um, I mean, Church App Live, well, and this is along the nature of, let's just try something, you know, start something new. So we get something new, something new, fresh. You can use Church App Live. You can use any of the other apps that you can have developed for your church. Sure. But for Church App Live, I mean, our focus is all around interactivity. So we want the people not only consuming through the app, you know, what's going on within the church and your materials, but also participating. So we've built in some unique features in there so that you can do things like check in to the service through the app. Uh, you can take, uh, if, you, if the admin or the, the pastor has set up a teaching challenge, so you can have a set of multiple choice questions that go with that week's teaching and have, uh, you know, they'll, they'll put them together and then you just participate right in the app, right as the teaching's going on. You can set up polls and then have people vote on the poll and we have it set up so you can project, you know, real time. You could say, you know, address the congregation mm -hmm. with um, a particular question and have yeah. a poll set up answers and then go, oh, let's go see how everybody's responding. And you can see, you know, which way the topics are going. Mm -hmm. As yeah. I mentioned in um, an earlier thing, we had a, when I was in the corporate world, we had big all hand staff meetings with, you know, we had, I was a large corporation, so there's like, you know, over 100 people there. And they had uh, what we called clickers, but it was a very similar thing where they, it was just a really good real time way to get a feel for what people are thinking and what. And, you, and so you can kind of target, at, at, in the corporate world, they would kind of target the meeting or they just get the data to get you know, mm -hmm. feedback. Uh, but in a you know, church setting, you can go and get, get the feeling for you know, where people are going and mm -hmm. you, know, you can sure. do some really crazy stuff like, okay, I had three sermons prepared. Uh, which one do you guys want to hear? <laughs> that would be creative. That would be very challenging. Yeah, it really would be. I don't know if we can do that. But <laughs> the, the whole idea behind this is, 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 is again, interactivity, people can have some fun with because we actually even have a uh, a level uh, a setup what do we call it a level system where right it's set up so that the more you participate the more points you earn right. and so there's a friendly gaming world that you can enter within other church right. members and the churches that have you know exploded and started to use this it really uh, catches fire with, for those that are interested in that right. whole element right. and it drives more participation yeah so there'll be people that are participating and they go, oh, Mary is ahead of me in the participation. So I'm going to right. make sure that I participate both during the service and then we have some uh, daily things built into the app such that you can read the Bible daily, you can do devotions daily. And so right. there's some tools that will keep you sure. regular during the week uh, outside the service and kind of track your progress and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. so a, a nice little tool to kind of break out of the summer slump or if you just want to get a fresh start at something, whatever season you're in in your church, uh, you know, something like this would be kind of a nice little thing to use to spark some interest. And uh, again, we are in a world today where we just have a huge amount of technology available to us. A lot of it's free. And, and you, if you're not using some of this stuff, you're missing the boat, <laughs> you know, because you can use it to really connect with people and, 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 and encourage people and build your teams and, and, and build your church with technology. Yeah, and I think one of the misconceptions out there is that, uh, that people aren't using tech to the degree that, that they really are. I think, uh, and, and especially if you're not using the tech, then you assume no one else is. But as you get into this, you'll find that yeah. 
wow, everybody really is on Facebook, and yeah. everybody really does have a cell phone, that, a smartphone that, right. they're, that they're using every day. So you want to you know, go ahead and, and leverage these things and so, that you're, so that the church is on the leading edge of this sort of sure. thing rather than you know, lagging behind. Yeah, and there's all sorts of stats. We've talked about them before, but there's all sorts of stats. I think over 50% of the people out there that have smartphones are using it to check websites, using it to check their email, you know, using it to check different apps that they yeah, have. And they're so, open to, to yeah. explore and do other things yeah. that they're associated with. Right. So I just have been using my grocery store app here because I've been the grocery store runner and huh. so get you involved yeah. with, you know. Huh. I'll, have to, I'll have to find out a little more about that. That's a good idea. All right, so we're just about out of time here. But, you know, if you have some suggestions, if you would like to add to this list, let us know. Uh, our email best, probably the easiest way to get a hold of us is support at streamingchurch.tv. Uh, support at streamingchurch.tv. You can always call us or just go to one of our websites. We've got, uh, obviously, streamingchurch.tv. We've got churchapplive.com. We've got myflock.com and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff in between there. But we'd love to talk to you if you've got some suggestions. And as we continue these podcasts, if you have some uh, suggestions for topics, uh, we, we would love to hear from you. And again, uh, as we've said at the beginning here, we're not just a tech tech company. We're, we're, uh, we're Christians that really are committed to helping the church. We want to enable the church. And so because of my experience in pastoral ministry, Steve, your experience and uh, working with leadership teams and, and even some of the other people we have here, we're all involved in our churches. And so we have a heart for that. And we have, we have a heart to help you and your church, your ministry, you know, get to the next level, to get to wherever you want to get it. Uh, chances are we've crossed that bridge and maybe we can help you. And that's really all we want to try to do. And if we can use you, help you with, you know, streaming video or those kind of things, great. If we can help you with uh, just maybe helping you with volunteers uh, you know, ministry wise, uh, we certainly want to do that. So anyhow, so that's it for today, for today, our podcast, uh, again, uh, check us out on iTunes and give us a review. Yes. Rate us. You can find us at church solutions. That's, yes. That's what it is. And, uh, uh, we can do that. And then again, if you need to email us, just support at streaming All right. All right. All right. Sounds great. Well, Steve, thanks for your time today. And folks, thank you for listening. I'm Phil Thompson, and we will catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Have a great day.